Hello and welcome. My name is Sarah McLean. It is September 8th, 2021, and I'm happy to be here with you today. We are on Awaken Wednesdays, and as you might have heard me say before we recorded, um, this program generally consists of about a 10-minute conversation, about a 20-minute meditation, and then we open it up for discussion. If you're listening to this on recording, you might miss the discussion, so if you want to join us anytime, you can go to mclaneMeditation.com and get the link to join us for free. We do this every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, 5 p.m. GMT, and it's spelled McLean, M-C-L-E-A-N. I feel so excited to be here because, gosh, you know, every Wednesday I wake up saying, okay, what kind of meditation are we going to do? This morning I woke up and um, my husband was playing this music. He's a tabla player. If you don't know what that is, it's like this kind of, um, we don't have them in the, in the Western world, but they are an East Indian type of um, drum and they're very rhythmic and a little bit high pitched. And he was listening to that. He plays them. And this woman was singing, I am the light of my soul. And I, and I wish I could pull it up on this computer here, but I can't because I'm on a different one today. But um, it is a beautiful, beautiful rendition. And um, I will post a link to it maybe next week. And under the recording of this, I am the light of my soul. I am beautiful. I am bountiful. I am blissful. And you know, what is it like when you at, when you say that to yourself? I am the light of my soul. I am. Some people use the word I am to talk about the life force that lives through them, the God force that lives through them, the source of all that is. I am. I am the light of my soul. And um, so I am, of course, is the way we start an affirmation, present moment, present tense, affirming what's what's really true. And um, some of you have been learning this in my teacher training about affirmations. We affirm the positive. It has to be in a positive way. It has to be in the present moment, not I will be healthy. I am healthy. Not I have been a terrible person. I am a good person using it. I am, I am, I am doing the best I can. So today we're gonna to be talking about compassion toward ourselves, toward other people, using affirmations, and we'll also practice um, a just like me practice. And if you don't know what that is, it's a very simple practice used, well, first I think became popular through the search inside yourself, through Google's compassion training they adopted throughout their company. And a just like me practice really helps to bring us home to um, how we're all so much more alike than we are different. Even though these days, and I don't know about you, but I am definitely meeting people who want me to be different than I am. And I know that sometimes I'm challenged with wanting to be having people be different than they are. And to develop that compassion for where people are and how they live is essential. So uh, there are about 45 other people on this call besides you and me. And um, so we're gonna be meditating together, but first I wanted to talk a little bit about compassion. And welcome to those of you just joining us. I have been letting a bunch of you in. Um, so I wanted to read a little bit of what compassion is. And it's this is a definition of compassion from Joan Halifax, who, if you don't know who she is, she works in the hospice world, um, helping people transition. And she teaches a lot of hospice workers. She's a Zen Buddhist and has the Upaya Center out in um, New Mexico. And she said, compassion may de be defined as the capacity let me start that again. Compassion may be defined as the capacity to be attentive to the experience of others, to wish the best for others, and to sense what will truly serve others. The word compassion means to suffer together. And compassion is really um, the desire to alleviate the suffering of others. The desire to alleviate the suffering of others. It's not just feeling the suffering and being feeling sorry for people, but it's that desire to take some action to relieve it. And sometimes the best action we can take is to meditate. I was talking about this the other day is, you know, in all so many mystic traditions, people have, there's a, a monastic quality to it. There's, there are people who commit their entire lives to be 
the washing machine of karma, for lack of a better term, uh, to help to change the vibration of the world around them. And they, they really dedicate their lives to that. And um, those of us who are here on Wednesdays are part of that team. You know, maybe your life, whole life isn't dedicated to alleviate suffering, but your practice can change the world. And um, I don't know if you've noticed that even in your own microcosmic orbit there where you notice people around you um, are maybe more peaceful in your environment, your pets, maybe your family members, maybe your community, but you have a ripple effect. You have a ripple effect just by meditating. Okay, I'm letting a few more people in here. Welcome to you who are here. I was just talking about compassion. And um, so let's talk about how to cultivate compassion. So compassion really is to heed the heart's call, to heed the heart's call to alleviate suffering. And when we look at, well, what can I do? Sometimes the only thing you can do is to pray or to look someone in the eyes or to say to someone, I hear you, or to meditate to keep your own internal landscape at peace. So how do you tend to respond when you witness someone in pain and someone in compassion, and someone who's struggling? How do you tend to respond? What's your compassionate response to that? So I like you to think about that maybe in the last couple of days, how have you responded to someone who has been in pain? Do you ignore it? Do you move toward it? Do you bear witness to it? Do you take action? How about when you have felt that you have been suffering or you have been in pain. How do people treat you? If you've been struggling, maybe over the past few days. What is it like to witness someone else being compassionate. Maybe somebody reaching out, maybe somebody you've read about who's saving this person or rescuing the animals in Afghanistan or helping to host a family or um, take care of someone who's sick. Did you know that watching compassion and being watching compassion and seeing compassion actually activates the compassionate muscle inside you. It's actually contagious, just like stress. Compa compassion is contagious and it's just like stress. So what that means is if you see someone stressed out, you may notice that you feel stressed out. If you see someone being compassionate, you might notice that you feel like there's something I can do here. So let's build our capacity for being compassionate by first beginning to meditate and bearing witness to our own internal experience and staying really present with ourselves. We'll do that through a breath awareness practice. And then we'll invite a heart-centered breath, a heart-centered breath where you start to activate the qualities of compassion or forgiveness or love or caring. And that's done just by bringing your attention and even your hands right to that heart space, to that heart center. And then we'll practice the just like me practice. So for those of you who are fairly new to meditation, um, I just wanna remind you of some things I talk about with meditation. And since we're on the topic of compassion, one of the most important aspects of meditating is to be nice to yourself with your eyes closed. How you treat yourself in there is essential. I know many of us are not too nice to ourselves and we would never treat a friend like that. We wouldn't be as harsh with them. We wouldn't be as critical of them. So, and it could be that you treat your body a particular way too, that is less than kind. So throughout this whole practice, remember to be kind to yourself and give yourself a break, body, mind, and soul. 
Secondly, it's okay if you get distracted. We're going to start with a breath awareness practice. And sometimes that is not enough to charm your attention. So we'll add a little affirmation to it. And that might keep you focused right here, right now. And then if the mind does wander, just come back again, 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 and again. That's the mindfulness muscle. That's the meditation muscle. That's the focused attention. The third is let go of expectations. I know many of you have been meditating every Wednesday, every Monday and Wednesday, if you're joining Susie on Mondays. And so let go of expectations and treat this as it's very, as, it, as if it's your very first time. And let's see what else. Oh, don't try to feel something you don't feel. Feel what you do feel. That's compassionate to be kind to yourself and be with what you're actually experiencing rather than what you think you should be experiencing. And lastly, we're going to stick with the whole practice and it'll be about 20 minutes. Thanks for being here. I'm going to have you sit comfortably. I keep track of the time here. We're going to be meditating for about 20 minutes. I'll guide you through the practice. So even if you don't think you're good at it, um, you can get good at it by practicing. That's why they call it a practice. Getting comfortable, putting your hands wherever they feel comfortable, palms up, palms down, on your knees, on your lap, holding, the, holding them or a particular mudra you like to do. Letting your eyes gaze softly toward the ground or letting them close. Then begin to take some deeper breaths ideally through your nose. Breathing in slowly and fully and breathing out slowly and fully at your own pace. Three long, slow, deep breaths. It sends a signal to your body that it's okay to relax right here, right now. Letting everything be as it is as you let your breath return to its natural rhythm and depth. Letting the breath come and go, its own rhythm, its own pace. It may change as you pay attention to it. There's no need to force, no need to control. You may notice as your mind starts to settle down and the body starts to settle down that you're more aware of the sounds in the environment. So take a moment to welcome everything you hear. sitting in the I am of your existence and welcoming all sounds. Welcoming all sensations as you begin to become more aware of the body, the support that's here in this moment. Feeling the solid ground underneath your feet, the support of the chair or the cushion underneath you. The energetic support of the people here meditating along with you. People all over the world who are meditating right now. Again, turning to the breath. Noticing the subtleties of the breath, the varying temperatures, movement, stillness and how the body responds to each inhale and exhale.
being present with the start of the breath, the pauses between the breath, the turnaround of the breath, the end of the exhale. And if you'd like to include that affirmation, I am with the breath. I on the inhale, am on the exhale. Feel free to do that if it keeps you more attentive to this moment. We'll practice this for a few more minutes. And drawing your attention now to the gentle rise and fall of your chest. You might put your hand on your chest and tune into the heart space. 
behind the breastbone. Can you even imagine the breath moving in and out from the heart center? We'll begin to use some of the I am statements, the affirmations. You might see or feel or imagine a light inside you as we begin with, I am light. Affirmations can sometimes bring up Resistance, and if that's there, simply love that too. Silently repeating it to yourself. Imagining it to be true if you don't feel that way. I am beautiful. Silently repeating that affirmation. I am wise. I am honest. I am loving. I am loved. I am generous. I am strong.
I am empowered. I am healthy. I am creative. I am safe. I belong. Continuing this practice and inviting whatever affirmations you need right now or simply resting in the I am. We'll do this for a couple of minutes. I'll keep track of the time. And now let's practice compassion with the Just Like Me practice. 
And you can do this by bringing into your awareness someone you find maybe different than you, has a difference of opinion or sees the world differently, or someone you're having a little bit of a challenge relating to. And bring them into your awareness. Even imagine bowing to them or acknowledging them in some beautiful way. And I'll read some phrases to you from this practice. This person has a body and a mind just like me. This person has feelings, emotions, thoughts, just like me. This person has experienced physical and emotional pain and suffering, just like me. This person is worried and frightened sometimes, just like me. This person has longed for love, just like me. This person is learning about life still, just like me. This person wants to be caring and kind to others, just like me. This person is looking for the best ways to take care of their mind and body, just like me. This person wants to be free from pain and suffering, just like me. This person wants to feel safe, just like me. This person is doing the best they can in this moment, just like me. And now we'll offer some wishes for their well being. May you have strength and resources and the support you need to navigate difficulties with peace and ease. May you be free from pain and suffering. May you be peaceful and happy.
may I have the strength and support and sense of safety to cultivate and navigate difficulties in this life. May I be free from pain and suffering. May I be peaceful and happy. May I recognize I'm doing the very best I can in this moment, just like they are. So in your mind and heart, you might say thank you to this person. and appreciate yourself. And as we come out of the practice, I invite you to keep your eyes closed and bring your attention to this moment, to the sound you hear and the environment to the sensations in your body. And deepen your breath. And once you feel like you're Ready to open your eyes, you can do that. Stretching into the space around you if you like. Opening your eyes slowly. Being kind to yourself, don't rush out of meditation. So thank you for joining me today. This was a practice I needed. So thank you for being a part of that. Compassion, that is what this time on this planet is calling each one of us to to be, to do, to live, honestly. To recognize that we're so much more alike than different and that we're all doing the best we can with what we know. And if someone doesn't seem to be loving and kind to you, we can still stay on our practice because this is the way forward, I believe, is to be present with the differences and love them anyway. Be present with our differences and love ourselves anyway. To stay strong, to be nice to ourselves, to be courageous, and to keep on being the peace. That's it. So thank you for joining me today. I'm going to go ahead and um, stop recording. And thank you for joining us.